بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Okay so now here we'll be uh, seeing how we can utilize the extra server onto the GNS3 Now in this case what I'm doing is I do have my local uh, laptop now this is my local uh, PC or the laptop which I'm using for most of my GNS3 labs Now I do also have my uh, remote server which I'll be using a little bit later on for adding to the topology here So in this case Now here I'll be using my uh, laptop this is my laptop let's say and which is running uh, approximately you know you can say like 32 to 64 GB RAM which I'm running here and also I do have a remote server uh, probably this server is my local LAN so I'll be using the local LAN not a uh, remote not remote means uh, not on the remote LAN in my local network it can be on the local network or if you have an internal uh, routed network you can also use that even this can be on the internet as well uh, but again you need to install the vpn and all those things for uh, that one so here we'll be seeing on the local network so i'm using this 192.168.15.103 and this is my 15.111 the ip address of the remote server is 15.10 so the first thing what i'll do is we will be going onto the remote server here we need to make sure that we do have the gns3 vm uh, installed on that now how to do that we know just make sure that we go to the new virtual machine just click on go to file open and once you go and open then uh, probably you will see the gns3 vm file which you have to locate so the gns3 uh, vm file once you locate and we just need to load this uh, gns3 vm file okay this one again the same way as you do uh, installation so this is my gns3 vm which is going to be installed and make sure that the network settings on this gns3 vm will be uh, based on the network so if i go to the VN vm settings here i can see that the network adapter is going to be bridged so make sure that it is selected as a bridge so the bridge option indicates that i am going to connect this to my uh, local physical network so which means the vm will be getting an ip address from the local network so that i can be reachable from my local lan from the local pc so let's wait for the gns3 vm to uh, finish up the booting process and once it is done now this is something you can do either on the windows uh, vmware or any other option and here you can see this is my gns3 vm and you will see the ip address and the port number because this is the ip address and the port number which will be using for connecting from my laptop or a remote device and we need to make sure that we use the username and the password is gns3 and gns3 so we'll go back now to my local device so on my local device also i have the gns3 installed and as you can see there is only local uh, cpu which is running here and as per this if i go back and create a new topology or new blank project if i just add any new blank project here i should be able to just load the iways devices so i don't have the gns3 vm installed now there are uh, multiple things i can i can enable the gns3 vm on both to share the resources like let's say this is my just my 16 gb ram machine and which is something i'll be using for most of the lab simulations and every time i don't want to go to the gns3 vm and do that now i can just combine the resources so now the gns3 vm where we simulate most of the virtual devices whether it is an iwo u or iwo l or uh, any firepower devices or any cisco eyes or any other device like sd wan labs so all these things uh, the most of the devices which you run uh, will be on the gns3 vm so which means either i should have my local uh, cpu there is one option which we generally use where you install the gns3 vm on the local cpu that is one option we can enable that if you have enough resources i can also do that so we go to the preferences and we just go and enable the gns3 vm and we can set the local ram whatever the ram you want as per your uh, device capabilities like here i have 64 gb ram so i'm going to allocate around 20 uh, gb kind of 
for the local local thing and uh, make sure that we also have the gns3 in the local vmware as well so if i go to the local vmware so this is one option so i'm enabling two one is the local gns3 vm and as well as this you can see here this is uh, something what we have set 32 gb ram this is my local so i'm not going to show you the local local option you already know maybe i'll, I'll do it a little bit later so we'll be doing the remote option here so in the remote option we need to go on servers and click on this remote server and we have to add the remote server so let's say i'm going to add my server and the ip address of the gns3 vm and this has to be the exact ip address of the of this uh, gns3 vm here on the remote server and for better understanding you can also check the reachability try to ping to make sure that we do have the reachability to that uh, vm and the tcp port number is going to use 80 and also we need to enable the authentication where i'm going to use the gns3 will be the default username and gns3 will be the default uh, password so once i click on ok and apply i should see the gns3 vm will be uh, running so it's also running on the local machine because i have enabled that i think so as you can see on the right side there is a gns3 vm running here and it shows the cp utilization as well as the ram utilization of that and also it's going to start the local vm as well so i also started the local vm so you will see the uh, gns3 local vm also will be running here and once you're done with this now whenever you you want to add the device like whenever i want to add a new appliance so whenever you say a new appliance or import an appliance file so any device you add let's say i'm going to add the cisco ibis v so it's going to opt, ask you the option install the appliance on the remote server now we can select the server here and we can go ahead with this so the difference is whenever you select this uh, remote option the remote server it basically you're going to utilize the cpu and the ram from the remote server which can be shared so if you have multiple servers we can add those multiple servers to our topology the gns3 topology and we can share the resources so if i'm using the installed appliance using the gns3 vm which is going to be the local one so if you see here there is a local uh, gns3 vm which we have enabled based on the ram allocation it's going to use that so depending upon that if you have uh, both the devices have enough rams and the cpu resources in that scenario you can uh, divide the devices into multiple and select this option according to this option it's going to work so as you can see here i'm going to select on the remote server here and the select the server here and click on next and then we need to just upload the file i was we file we need to upload now here you can see i have just located the images so we can uh, simply go and select the images from here and we can start uploading so the rest of the process is again the same thing the only difference is we are just trying to utilize the remote server cpu resources and according to that we are uh, setting up the device so now the issue is with the code but again this is how the process goes so whatever the devices you are uh, trying to set up this is how you do on the remote server so the process is almost the same thing the only thing we need to keep in mind uh, whatever the remote server that is reachable so make sure that you test by using the command prompt and we just need to add the remote server from here where we go to edit preferences and make sure that if you want to add any additional servers we can also add it from here so that's that's how it is so this way i'm going to utilize most of the labs with the remote server because every time logging onto the remote server gns3 and uh, using from from the device it will be a little bit uh, difficult so this is something you can always do